Plumley Colliery is quite a special coal mine. It lies amongst the privately owned estate grounds in the Leafy Moss Valley, between Eckington and Ridgeway. And because of this, it has remained largely untouched in the hundred years since the coal mining ended there in 1901. But it is not especially a typical example, because Plumley Colliery is also notable for its huge engine house, seldom seen. Seldom Seen was built in the 1870s by colliery owner John Rhodes, not so long after the colliery had first opened. The new engine house was part of an unusually ambitious expansion plan that also included the building of a dedicated railway line, the Penny Engine Line as it was known, which transported coal directly from Plumley Colliery to the Midland Railway at Renishaw. It is easy to see why the dark, eerie ambience of Plumley Colliery is the scene of so many stories from the past 100 years. From ghost sightings to the escape of a circus tiger from an Eckington show at the turn of the 20th century, which savaged and killed a young man. However, one particular episode in the Colliery's history stands out as more than mere local legend. One Saturday afternoon, in March 1895, four young residents of the town ventured upon a frozen pond near Seldom Seen Engine House, and the mettle of one man, Alfred Williamson, was truly tested. The events of that day were recorded in local newspapers and in the notes from the public inquiry that followed, which took place at the Prince of Wales Inn several weeks afterwards. Superintendent Faulkner, you were present at the scene, were you not? Could you please give your accounts of the events of Saturday, March the 16th, as you understand them? I was brought to the pond by the, uh, by the two lads, Roland Taylor and Edward Redfern. They'd been at, uh, they'd been at Wood Lane, which is a few hundred yards away, from the scene of the accident. The damage had already occurred by the time I got there. As I understand it, the four children, Esther and Percy Riley, Rebecca Godson and Louisa Pete, had been out playing in High Wood. They came out at the Colliery's Reserve Engine Pond, which, as we all know, was iced over. All the children, apart from Louisa Pete, went on to the ice, no, which broke. It was then that the young engineman, Alfred Williamson, heard the children's screams and went to the rescue. What was Williamson doing at the scene? Williamson was on duty at the colliery. And I wasn't working at the time, and he was there just as a watchman. He found the children struggling in the icy water and threw them a rope as a way of trying to pull them back onto the land. But the children couldn't keep hold of the rope. They must have gone under the ice. And it was then that Williamson tied the rope around his middle went into the water himself. <clears throat> Mr. Wilson, you are here to represent Plumley Colliery's owners, Mrs. J&G Wells. Well, we've put up many warning signs round the pond, but they've all been stolen for firewood. We are putting up a fence of three ropes all the way round the pond, but I don't believe it'll keep the children away. <laughs> Please continue, Sergeant Faulkner. Well, the pond is about eight feet deep. 
included in the mud. It was covered with ice, as I understand it, and Williamson couldn't swim. There must have been some commotion because the young lads Taylor and Redford heard the screams and went to the pond. They found the end of uh, Mr Williamson's rope on the <coughs> bank and tried to pull him in, but it came free. That was when they came to find me, although at the time neither of them realised the full situation. Mr. Wilson. No one regrets more what happened that day than the colliery company. Alfred Williamson was a good man. He was trying to serve humanity. It was a very heroic act. And I know the town of Eckington is mourning a very good man and three innocent children who have come to a tragic end. Despite Alfred Williamson's selfless bravery, Plumley Pond stole his life that day, together with those of Esther, Percy and Rebecca. The event shook the town, and over a thousand people attended their funerals at the church of St Peter and St Paul. It cannot be said that his efforts were for nothing, because we still remember him now as a great example of heroism and community spirit which is why Alfred's headstone takes pride of place within Eckington Cemetery. And while the three children are buried next to him, their families could not afford headstones, and so their graves lay unmarked until now. <laughs>